Hello and welcome to Video DNA, where the English is bad and the tutorials are good. I'm Jan Tabib and today I'm gonna show you how you can use those cool presets, digital clock and timer. But first, check this out. Yeah. So, after you get the presets and you install them, you're gonna get this time preset template. And inside you can find the 3D timers, the alarm, the iPad, the timer marker, and the watch. And this templates or project files are exactly what you need if you need to animate things and you can edit them and use them as you wish. But anyway, you're here to talk about how you can use it. So I'm going to take an empty comp and I'm going to call digital clock. While nothing selected, I'm going to double click the preset and I have a clock, a digital clock. And if you notice by itself, automatically it's working. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are the two ways that you can animate it. Because first of all, it animates automatically from the beginning of the comp until the end of it. And you can also manually animate it. So first of all, let's talk about the automatic animation. So the automatic animation is actually taking the speed. So as default, it's going to be one, which means it's going to be on real time. So you can see that after two seconds, you have two seconds and after four seconds, four seconds, six, etc. But if you want it to be faster, you can write four. So it's going to be four times as fast and you can write 60, which means that every second is a minute passing by. You can actually write negative numbers like minus 10 and then you're going to have a clock that is going backwards, which is, you know, you can use it from time to time. And if you write zero, it means that the animation is going to be manual because it's not going to change by itself. But we're going to talk about that in a minute. So I'm going to leave it on one. And now I can see that it starts on 12, which I'm not happy about because I wanted to start in a different time. So you can change that by going to the hours, minutes and seconds and change it. So I want it to be like 14, uh, you know, two o'clock PM. And I want it to be 15 minutes and 45 seconds. So this will be the time in the beginning of the comp in any speed. So if it's going to be like 10, it will start always from 14, 15, 45 seconds. So that's all you need to know about the automated animation. But if you want to change it by yourself, if you want to manually animate, you need to take the speed to zero. And now you can keyframe which value that you want. If I want until the end of the comp that five minutes will pass. So I'm going to write 20. And now in 10 seconds, five minutes will pass. You can actually animate all of them together, keyframes in the beginning of the comp and then at the end. So you have this animation oh, and the seconds, let's 38. That's it. It's that simple. So what else do you have here? So if you don't want to see the seconds, you can check that on or off. It's on by default. So this is pretty cool. If you don't want an AM PM clock, you want a 24 hour clock, you can check off the AM PM checkbox and then you will have like a 24 hours watch. And if you're not happy with the location and the scale, the size of the AM PM, you can take it wherever you want and you can scale it up or down. That's pretty much it. Let's talk about aligning the dividers. These are the dividers and you can change their location up and down until you're happy with these results because from time to time you want to change it because you can actually change the dividers to any character or characters that you want. So for example, I want to change this to a smiley. So I'm going to double click at the layer so I can edit it and then I'm going to type a smiley. And now I have a smiley divider and yes, 
I can align it up or down and it can be whatever you want. Now I'm going to take a star or maybe something else, you know, like brackets or something like that. Anyway, if you delete the dividers, you'll actually get the default columns. So that's about the dividers. Uh, let's talk about hiding the zeros. If you have a number that is smaller than 10 and you have an unwanted zero, you can check this checkbox and it will go away and this number will appear only when you need it. So if you have like, uh, you know, a different hour, that's it. So, uh, and the cool thing is that you have a tooltip. So if you're a bit lost, I'm gonna scale it down a bit, just a little bit lost, you can see everything that we talked about right now. So it's gonna help you using this preset. So I'm gonna check this off and this is all you need to know about the digital clock preset. But what about the timer preset? So I'm gonna take the timer and with nothing selected, I'm gonna double click it and I'm gonna take this downwards. And actually I don't need the digital clock anymore. So this is the timer and it's actually quite the same as the digital clock. The only thing that it's gonna animate until zero and that's it. You can manually animate it by typing a zero on the speed value and everything is pretty much the same. Here you have the seconds, the minutes and the hours. Uh, here you have a checkbox for the hours that you don't see them on default and you have one for the milliseconds. So if you don't want to see the milliseconds, you can check them off. By the way, the milliseconds are animated by themselves. You cannot change them, but they go exactly as they should in the animation. You have the align dividers and you have the tooltip. So what's so special about this one? If you noticed, the timer animation starts in the beginning of the comp. And from time to time, you don't want that to happen. So, you know, changing the layer position is not gonna change it. So what can we do to start the animation, the auto animation in second number two? Actually, that's very simple because all you need to do is to select the layer and press on the keyboard on the star or on the asterisk key and this will create a marker. And once you have a marker, the preset will know that it's not gonna animate until the marker appears and it's only set by the first, you know, the left one. So I'm gonna press control and click this marker to delete it. And I can move this marker wherever I want to start the animation. And that's almost it. Um, maybe I'm gonna take a different character because this is based on text layers. I'm gonna take the alarm clock and I can see a pretty cool timer that I made in a few seconds. Something you need to know about fonts. These presets works with any font that you wish, but it works best with the monospaced fonts, which means every character has the same width. And if you're using a different font that is not monospaced, you will see those jumps. So if that's important to you, use monospace fonts. And if you will notice, you look around you, you're gonna see that all the smartphone and all the digital clocks are actually using monospace fonts for the timers. So you can actually animate anything you see in reality with this preset. So the last thing I wanna talk about is a little bit about layer styles because I want this to look good, not only animate good because it does it perfectly. So I'm gonna take a different color for the font. Let's take a, let's take a green color and I want to make this a little bit glowy or you know, the edges Actually, it's the opposite of glowy. It's the edges are a little bit more dark than the center of the lead. So I'm gonna take a layer style, which is called inner glow. And by default, you're gonna see this ugly little mess, you know, the yellow mess. And I want to change it. I'm gonna change it to black. And I don't see it anymore because the default blend mode is screen. So I'm gonna change it to multiply. And now it looks better, but I need to maybe edit it just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to the opacity and I'm gonna take it just a little bit back. So if these letters are based on LEDs, you want those eights in behind. So I'm gonna take a new layer and I'm gonna type double eight, colon, double eight, colon, double eight. And I'm gonna parent it by pressing shift and it's gonna jump to the same location 
as the parent and now I want to take it back and change its color to something more like gray a really dark gray so now I can add a bevel effect let's take bevel alpha and drag it on the layer and I'm gonna change the light angle to this direction I'm gonna change the light intensity to 0.2 and the edge thickness to 1 and now I have this cool effect which is pretty nice well this is all you need to know about those cool presets digital clock and timer I hope it's gonna save you a lot of time and the headache of creating one by yourself will disappear well don't forget to visit our site to see more helpful tutorials it's gonna help you save a lot of time in your work and to like us on Facebook or subscribe to us on YouTube and maybe follow us on Instagram I'm Yaratabib and I'm gonna see you next time